So that's sort of the background where you had the vehicle bill going on and reducing emissions from tailpipes of automobiles, our number one source, but that renewable energy component. And at the same time, the California Energy Commission was adopting energy efficiency standards and appliance standards that were second to none with huge opposition like by General Electric on changing their refrigerators to being more energy efficient. Because why? The last thing they wanted is have to produce one refrigerator for California and the energy hog refrigerators for the other 49 states. So California is in that unique place again because of our purchasing power that we become almost a de facto national standard just based on the manufacturers. Because <laughs> yeah. we're too big a market, right? <laughs> and so, it, so that was sort of fascinating. I wanted to point that out because that's important to AB 32. AB 32, I had introduced in 2004, as you said, what it did was supposed, we realized, um, my staff and I, Adrian Alvord, who was the head of my uh, energy environmental Thing. She turned out to be the regional director for Union of Concerned Scientists after she left me. For, um, uh, we, we realized we needed to expand from the tailpipe bill. So we put in a placeholder in December of 2004, and it would require mandatory reporting by all major emitters, stationary sources, the major stationary source emitters in California, uh, report their emissions. There had already been a voluntary standard done, introduced in 1998 by Senator Byron Shear. <laughs> so there was no opposition to that because the larger um, industrial, mostly, and refineries producers, a lot of them had voluntarily help develop the protocols along with the climate registry and they were reporting yearly baseline amounts. And we had told them in the bill I did introduce that they would get credit for early action because otherwise last thing you wanted is people saying, why should we do this? Re reduce it now if you're gonna make us do it later and then we don't get recognized for that and we would just have to do more than our fair share. So. It started with voluntary. So this was a mandatory one, which across not just mobile sources, but stationary sources. So that was the genesis of AB 32. And I hadn't really realized how important that was, that if you knew there was an enforceable cap and you were going to have to reduce emissions, the market signal to the private sector for investment and innovation was amazing. Solar company owners told me they came to California, not in spite of our regulations. You know, we always get criticized as being over regulatory and anti business. They said, no, we came because of them. You created a market where we knew if we invest in this market, it's going to expand and grow. So if it had just been a voluntary something, we wouldn't have seen it. And that's been the challenge perhaps in some other states where things are aspirational versus enforceable. So uh, AB 32 used existing policies, had that um, authority given to the Air Resources Board. Uh, the governor was correct in putting in the market-based system that provided for a lot of support. But one thing about AB 32 was it required only a simple majority vote. One, what the major polluters have two choices. They can reduce emissions by themselves, either uh, find different energy sources or maybe reduce the amount of product they produce, or they can um, uh, buy allowances through that cap and trade system. I always call, call it pay to pollute, but allowances. And what do you do with those allowances, the fees that they give you, then you can reduce emissions somewhere else in California to make up for what they couldn't do. Because some industries still to this day really can't reduce emissions like cement. 
would be one. And so what's the point of closing down the cement factories if they're just moving to Nevada? If you care about global climate change, just getting rid of them in California isn't necessarily the solution because we're, we're the major purchaser of cement. And then, then it would just be imported from Asia. And that even makes less sense. So there are some uh, uh, industries that had um, uh, flexibility, I'll put it that way, in compliance and not having to buy allowances because they really didn't have. I, I spent four hours in trying to understand the chemical composition of fly ash to see if you could reduce carbon intensity in cement. I really, <laughs> this is not, <laughs> that's not my specialty. So, uh, a fascinating uh, journey, but those market signals were sent. It, it that cap on emissions really was was amazing. We got in that period of time between forty and sixty percent of all the venture capitalist dollars in clean energy came to California. It was that's when Silicon Valley exploded, and and all the clean energy companies. E2, the environmental entrepreneurs that started on the journey with me and with the tailpipe bill, they were the major players in AB32. The press conferences in the Capitol attended by all the media were all business people. 